beautiful spring day. That was uh, a little challenging, but excited we got through it. I believe healthy. I haven't gotten the final report yet from the trainers, but it, it looks like that. And that's always my biggest fear. I want, I want the kids to have fun. I want the fans to enjoy it, but I like to get out of there. And when you divide the team, it's hard, right? Because, you, you know, we're not the deepest team to start with, and then you split them in half. Uh, but I do think the kids have a lot of fun when we split it in half, the, you know, the competition, the camaraderie. You know, they're busting each other for 24 hours straight about who's going to win and all that stuff. And the coaches are no different. They, they revert back to their teen years. So it was, uh, it was fun. I'm glad that we got through it. And like I said, now it's on to, you know, final exams and then we're into our summer program. So I'm excited about that. The spring as a, as a uh, overall body of work was encouraging. I think we improved, improved in the offensive line, improved at the quarterback position. Uh, we have, a, I think, really some depth at the running back position and we're growing up at the wide receiver position, tight end, I think, um, you know, getting better at the position as a whole. Defensively, we didn't play a lot of guys today, as you saw. You know, I, I look at it when, when players have between 750 and 1,500 snaps of, of Big Ten competition, I really am not going to, you know, they didn't really go live very much this spring. They did thud, but very rarely, uh, really didn't at all go live live. And that's by design. Uh, we'll get plenty of that come the fall. So, um, again, I think there's some development there as well. Some of the depth at the D-line is starting to is show up. Uh, linebacker, you know, uh, to see some of those young linebackers get out there and play and do a good job and know what they're doing and make tackles, that's good. And then we, and we put a lot of guys in the secondary as well today. So, uh, overall, productive spring. We got better. Um, and... You know, I break, I break the year into five parts, and we just finished part two. So, so far, it's been a productive part one and a productive part two. We have some recruiting to do right now. We have some portal work to finish up, uh, which could be really, really uh, advantageous if, if we can do the things that we hope we can do. And then uh, you set the roster and you move into summer. So that's where we find ourselves, and uh, I'll try to answer anything I can. Greg, your thoughts on the quarterback play, and how much did the elements affect their game? Yeah, today's a tough day to judge quarterback play, right? Uh, winds were gusting up over 20, 25 miles per hour at times. Uh, the rain was almost constant throughout the game. Um, you know, I think the, the, tra the equipment people did as good a job as they could at getting dry balls in there, but it doesn't take long for the ball to get wet. Um, you know, all those factors, I thought they handled it well. They operated the offense. Yeah, you know, I don't think we had any delay of games, which when you're running a new offense, that could happen, and they didn't. They were on top of it. Um, made some nice runs. Um, I think if you, if you play in those conditions, you know, the quarterback would carry it a little more. We're not going to do that here. But uh, it was good. It was a good no, – there's no great thing to look at and say, oh, that was fantastic. It was a hard day to throw. But uh, I thought they ran the offense and operated the offense efficiently. <laughs> Today you guys uh, played a lot of man-to-man -man and cover one, and uh, I wanted to know, you know, does that speak to your trust to your young DBs and stuff on your on this team? Uh, I don't know if it speaks to that. You know, we don't play a lot of different coverages in the spring game. You know, we basically stick to one or two coverages. So, you know, 50-50 flip really what it turns into. You either play split safety coverage or you play single high coverage. Um, probably ended up playing more single high because of the conditions. You know, it wasn't an easy day to throw, so you can be a little bit more. But I, I'm not sure uh, Coach Arasimiak or Coach Shiraka were doing any game planning. You know, they were calling it for both sides. So that's probably how it happens. Coach, you ran the ball at like a two to one clip. Was that a byproduct of the weather or is that indicative of what this team wants to be? I don't know. We have to find out. Yeah, I, I think the weather had something to do with it. But, um, you know, certainly we need to get better at running the football, right? And we have people that can run the football. So uh, we got to get better on the offensive line. We're working at that. We're making progress. But we do it every time we practice. I mean, every, it doesn't matter if we're in pads, out of pounds. We're going to work on that. Um, the conditions kind of lend to it a little bit more today than, than normal. Big picture question for you. You've got uh, two coordinators you trust, experienced defense coming back. I mean, is this as optimistic as you've been finishing a spring practice since you've been back? It, uh, it is. I'm, uh, since I've been back here, yes, um, it is. I think what we're going to have to see is how quickly do we kind of get to operating the offense 
at the level. It doesn't have to be at optimum level, but how quickly do we get to operating the offense at an acceptable level? We're not there yet, but we have a training camp to get ready and a summer to get ready. So if we can get that going and accept, you know, to me, you have to become acceptable before you become better than that and then eventually elite at what you're doing. So it's steps along the way. That's going to be the key. Um, but I am. I'm very encouraged. Uh, kind of, it's been a quiet off season as far as, you know, not a lot of stir going around and just a lot of people working really hard to get better. And that's kind of the way I like it. Yep. Greg, it's been about a year and a half since we've seen Reggie Sutton uh, in actual game action. Um, how optimistic are you to have him going forward, and how's he progressing overall? I can't tell you how optimistic I am because it really is, you know, how he responds each and every time. But like, I think he played like 20 plays today. And I tell you, there's a lot of people that said that could never happen. It reminds me of those of you who have been around a while. You remember Ryan Neal, the, the horrific injury he had in the Miami 2002 Miami game. And Ryan had a similar recovery. It was about 18 months before he could even start doing things. Now, Ryan was, you know, you couldn't write a better script, right? A two-time All-Big East player after the injury. And, um, uh, boy, I'd love to see Reggie be able to do that. But it, just for his own, you know, psyche, the ability to work as hard as he did and then actually get to go out and play in a game, albeit a spring game. He played in a game today. And that, to me, is really cool. And he's worked harder. I mean, I'm telling you guys, the amount of sacrifice he's made to get back to playing is off the charts, especially in the first year or so. My goodness, that guy, you know, he'd be here all day. He just wouldn't relinquish, you know, his dream of playing. So I sure hope so. And as a team, it really would help us. As I've said before, when he went down, he was our best lineman. And he was a legitimate Big Ten guard. So if he gets back to close to what he was, that's going to help our team. But right now, I'm just happy for him. Greg, you mentioned uh, attacking the portal after this. Uh, is there anything you could share about where, what positions you guys are looking at, and your optimism of, of getting you know guys you want? No, I can't really get into that right now. Um, but I think you, you guys kind of know what we're trying to do, right? where we're trying to bolster ourselves. And, and maybe you don't. but. Uh, that's kind of private, but we are we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can. But again, I'll repeat that the way we use the portal and the way we approach the portal is they really have to be a cultural fit. Otherwise, I don't want to bring them here because they could be a great player, but if they're not a cultural fit, they're gonna lead guys in the wrong direction. And they're that good, they're gonna make plays. And I just you know it's more about building the program than one guy coming in here and having personal success, but but bringing us down. It's real important that yes, they're talented, yes, they'll lift, lift the level of our team, but yes, they fit our culture. And I think we have a few of those, which is one of the reasons that, you know, they're considering us. We just got to see how it ends. What did you see from uh, Moses throughout the spring and how it kind of culminated uh, with today? I have been excited by Moses. I think Moses has, uh, has really progressed, and he's got great guys to, to, to follow in that room, right? You got a guy like Deion Jennings who – Deion Jennings is just, you know, our best defensive player last year. And this spring had an unbelievable spring. Just choo. So I expect big, big things from him, you know, a leader on our defense. He's around Tyreen Powell in that room, right? Uh, again, a guy who played so much football for us and now is doing well. Uh, Mo, he and Mo to Ray came back together from their injury. Mo was a tremendous help to Moses because they, they basically rehabbed at the same time about the same pace. So what a great guy, you know, there's not a harder worker than, than Mo Ture. So I really like that room. Uh, I really like their coach, Corey Heatherman, is an exceptional football coach. I, I see that room being a strength. And Moses is, is certainly, you know, you just, he's, sky's the limit for him. So we just got to keep developing him. You know, it's a, it's a big jump, but he'll, he'll make it. Aaron Young and Al Shadi Salam both had a lot of carries, a lot of efficient carries. Um, in this game. What do you make of how they look today and how they've looked as the spring has gone on? You know what? They've both have really good springs. Uh, again, Aaron coming back from the injury last year, I'm not sure he was all, all the way back. I'm not sure he's even all the way back now, but he keeps getting better and better. I thought he ran more violently this year, or this spring rather, um, which at finishing off runs, you said efficient, right? In this system, if you run violently, you finish off the run, it's going to be the difference between a two-yard run and a three-yard run, a three-yard run and a four-yard run. And that changes the complexion. Two, two downs 
in that series later, it changes the complexion of what we're what we're looking at. So critical. Uh, Al Shadi Salam, he has another gear. He's a guy that has some some special speed and explosion, and we have to find ways to utilize him. So like I said, the running back room I think is a deep room. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that room. Okay. Uh, regardless of the weather today, how confident were you in the abilities of both Gavin uh, Wimsat and Evan Simon today? Yeah, I'm confident. Uh, they've shown me this spring that they've grown quite a bit. Um, games are different, right? Games are games. You can you can do it in practice. I know it's a spring game, but it's still a game. It's a little bit different. You know, we we kind of put a little extra weight on our scrimmages. We have two scrimmages in the spring, and we have the spring game as the third kind of live action. And then we'll have a couple in the fall, and then, you know, then or in the in the summer training camp, and then it's games. You know, games. Certain guys can flip that switch, so to speak, and they take what they've done in practice and they elevate. And that's what I wanted to see. I want to keep seeing them in that kind of pressure situation. But I think, as I said earlier, their ability to control the offense and really run the offense was what I was impressed with today in, in really bad conditions. <laughs> Quick follow-up on that, Coach. I know you said it was uh, hard to kind of gleam anything from the conditions today, but did either quarterback in your eyes gain an advantage in the quarterback competition from today's spring game? Oh, I don't know. We're going to sit down, like I've said before. Kirk and I will sit down in the next couple of weeks and kind of decide where we are with everything. But I think, you know, those of you who have been around practice, you see how we operate. And uh, we'll, I think we'll, we'll have a good idea who's, who's what pretty quickly. Can you just speak to the significance of the decal on the helmet, remembering Ryan and, and his life and his legacy? Yeah, you know, Ryan was a guy that touched a lot of people in the short time he was here. And um, it was a lot of our players were very, very close to me, had that kind of personality. And, um, you know, we had probably, I don't know, nine or ten of our players went out to his service in Chicago. So that kind of shows you the, although he was only here a short time, a year, he had a, a big impact on a lot of people in our program, including me. You know, he's a very positive, positive guy and a hard, hard worker, you know. Uh, tragic, absolutely, but that was our little way to try to show and have a remembrance of him here at his, his first, you know, school that he, he came to at Rutgers. Guys, I want to, I want a couple things before we close, right? I want to thank, number one, our fans who came out in this awful conditions. I saw people trying to hide underneath the cantilever and everything. And, uh, and then I also saw some people just sitting out playing in the rain, didn't care. Uh, that's, that's awesome. I also want to throw out a congratulations uh, to Braz. Braz getting picked by the uh, Jaguars. I saw that come up on the big board during the game. Um, you know, came here from Temple as a, as a transfer portal guy. Worked his tail off, had an unfortunate situation where he was injured. Another guy who just kept chopping, kept doing his thing. Came back a year later and played really well for us. And uh, I'm excited for him. He gets an opportunity to go to a great franchise. And uh, he'll, be a, he'll be one of those guys who, another Rutgers DB that plays a number of years. I'm convinced of that. He's a student of the game and a really fine player. Hopefully we get some, some more guys on some teams here. In the, is it over the draft yet? Seventh round. Seventh round or get them in as free agents. Because as you know, our guys, they, they go ready and prepared to, to make it in that league, not just get there. So I'll be excited to hear where our guys land. But uh, congratulations to Braswell, and uh, hopefully we can have some more congratulations here quickly. Guys, appreciate you coming out and covering it. As always, thank you.